Winner in Hell Band. Oh! Oh, listen to him. Crushing! So good. It's just crushing it up there today. The crowd and the audience, they, they went from a loud clap to a sour moan that the band just started crushing them. Mm-hmm. Stop mm-hmm. crushing them. They can't unless they completely stop. Yeah. Okay. They're fade wrapping up. it up. Fade out. Can we just fade the band out, please? <laughs> the audience today, thank you so much for coming. Yep. It's great as to have a packed house. As always. As every single time. Every single episode we've ever had has had an amazing audience. Yeah, I remember even when, you know, our, our, uh, our support travels well, too. Down in the Caribbean when we went down there, it was a great time. When we recorded on Labor Day and no one was there. Remember that day? Oh, yeah. The like teamster, we couldn't ago. get the Teamsters to work. But, <laughs> I, you know, I support that. We are freaking back, baby. Ooh. Another Dinner in Hell, episode 48. I don't think it's 48. I think I put the wrong. I think it's 47. <laughs> Another Dinner in episode 47. Dinner in Hell, episode 47. Bring it in, Brad. Welcome back, Connor. For another exciting edition of the Dinner in Hell podcast, the podcast where two amateur historians talk about the atrocious underbelly of history. I am one of your co-hosts. Brad the Impaler, and with me, as always, Ravishing Ron Maiden. Oh, hell yeah, Brad the Impaler. Thank you again for having me. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, Cotter <laughs> theme song for all you old people. Did I tell you I was in an uh, office wait in a waiting room in a... Uh, in a um, Mm-hmm. Heard a young girl talking to her mom about some guy being about welcome back Cotter. No, I heard her go. Yeah, and there's this old guy on her soccer team, and he was like thirty six. No, <laughs> I was just like, I'm gonna stomp your daughter right in front of you. <laughs> How dare you? I'm sensitive. That is, uh, that's pretty. It's pretty mean. Thirty six is old. Dinner and Hell show is just freaking on a roll. Last week's episode, Chickatillo, people are freaking just loving it. That serial killer. We got a serial killer audience. They love those episodes. That dude is super, super fucked up. Hey, I pronounced his name Chickatillo a couple times. Feel free on air to correct me. It might make for good (laughs) content. Yeah, if I, I don't I, mind if I pronounce something wrong, please. Like cloaca type of situation, that made for a good little segment. Yeah, all right, I'll let you know if I hear it. See, <laughs> sometimes it just slides by. I'll say I say shit wrong all the time. Like I'll combine words into one word what that was shouldn't be dinner in hell word that you invented. Marticulate. Yeah, meticulate. M- a Not- combination of articulate and meticulous. Yeah, meticulate. meticulate. Yeah. Yeah. That's a dinner and hell exclusive word, Ricky Bobby Inc. <laughs> Copyright, <laughs> trademark, Ricky Bobby Inc. Yeah. Freaking meticulate episode right here we got for you. Oh, oh shit. I believe I mean there is some possible controversy about this, but I'm pretty sure this is episode 47. But Ron, what are we talking about today? We're talking about a goddamn killing method oh yeah back in the pain game baby yeah old school last week with the serial killer old school this week with the straight up execution method what's happening (laughs) i'm just jamming 47 right yeah this is 47 Sam was my phone. <laughs> Fucking Shakecast. <laughs> Welcome back for another Shakecast podcast. podcast. <sighs> I'm Ricky Bobby Inc. <laughs> I'm Larry. Yeah, what's yeah. going on? What's going on? Well, I'm about to tell you because we're sitting here drinking, right? So here we are. I'll tell you what's going on to your face. 47, you son of a bitch. You change it. God damn it. Now I feel better. It's changed. All right, so here we are, Dinner in Hell, episode 47. 47, for sure. 
which I believe in Arabic would be uh, that might be 57, but I think it's 47. Yes, for our Arabic speaking listeners, 47. 47 to our English. To our American speaking listeners out there, goddamn red blooded Americans, 47 to you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Respect the goddamn flag, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Back to the show. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want um, any of our subjects kneeling during the Dinner in Hell anthem. Yeah, m any of you motherfuckers out there kneel during Dinner in Hell's intro music? Yeah. But it's ironic You'll because... You'll be put down. <laughs> Execution method known as pressing. 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 Like nowadays, a shirt? Like, nowadays, it's, when you think of pressing, it's laundry. Yeah, like dry clean. Like a shirt, you, you know, you tell them you want it starched. You can, maybe you want it back pressed. No ticky, no laundry. Is that The Departed, Jack Nicholson? Oh, yeah. He's talking to Chinese gangsters, trying to sell them processors. <laughs> they weren't the real processors. They're like garage door opener processors. <laughs> yeah, they got busted with some fake processors. <laughs> Oh, the Departed. And we'll be back with The Departed after the break. Yeah, so pressing. If it's on our show, it's probably not about shirts. We're talking bodies getting pressed until they either speak or die. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's the point. Is They want you to say something, and you don't want to say anything. And they put weight on you until you either say something. Over in a court. It's a court thing we're talking to people. Like a... Yeah, that that is that is the main application of like this plea, torture method. Like a plea, right? Like if you plead guilty, like, you could you have the right to not plead either. Mm -hmm. So they would press you until you plead either, right? <laughs> or you died. Yes. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> All right. So buckle up. Here we go. Let's learn about pressing, crushing. All right. Now people have been crushing one another to death for quite a long time, and speaking legendarily. It goes back to, you know, ancient Rome. There's a variety of methods in which this is employed. You know, most of the times it's racks. Sometimes it's logs. Sometimes it's living things. Like animals? Could be. Or people, even. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, everybody stand on this asshole. <laughs> Don't bother listening to him <laughs> scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Ignore the screams. Now... At this point, you may be wondering, what is it like? What happens when someone gets crushed to death exactly? I know. Because <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty unpleasant. You know, generally speaking, what the process is going to involve weights. Most often, stones would be placed on top of a person, sometimes directly on their body, sometimes on something else, like, like a, a piece of wood. They, they would say um, a door. Like they yeah. take a wooden door, lay it on a person, and then pile the mm -hmm. weight. Yeah, some, that was, I, I would say, probably the more common method that I encountered in my research for this. Same here. Now, with varying speed and intensity, the weights would be added over time. I mean, sometimes this was a pretty quick procedure. You know, people might die in as little as 15 minutes. But oftentimes this could, you know, it could last uh, a while. Like a couple of days. Oh, yeah. Because we'll learn about the daily, allow a daily diet they would give these people that are being mm -hmm. crushed. So... The daily meaning more than one day yep now we said mythically it goes back well rome has it you know their famous legend about the founding of the city of rome and within that legend there was a woman named tarpeia you know tarpeia I and mean, this is all legend none of this is this, historical but it shows what the the roman people thought about like Jesus. Crushing and how they would use it. Yeah. Like Jesus shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, Tarpeia may have may or may not have existed. Jesus I, I believe did. Okay. Yeah. This is more like, you know, 
for like gods. Romulus and Remus. Yeah, kind of more like gods Greek and shit gods. like that. Yeah. I saw Zeus, I swear it, with Some my like own Be- eyes. Beowulf type shit here. There was an eagle and then there was a man. Uh, it had to be Zeus. Which it would have been... Um, then he raped my mother. Is it Jupiter? <laughs> maybe? I think maybe Zeus is Jupiter? I don't know shit about the Roman pantheon all of a sudden. Hey, we're amateur histories historians you said it in the beginning of the show <laughs> it's true. any kind of error if you guys are mad about an incorrect thing if you're an actual historian listening to us and you're mad at us hey we said we're amateur we're also available to you talk up, shit go we're ahead up, we're Come up at front. me we're up front about it <laughs> we're amateur and that's what we do we will be amateur for the end of time till the end of time as well so why was tarpeya sentenced to crushing why was she a victim of it she she betrayed the city of Rome, and you'll notice a commonality in a lot of these implementations that involve stuff like treason. It's another treason thing. <laughs> so the Sabines were another uh, italic tribe. I mean, where's where's the italic peninsula rate on your favorites list? They're not even on my radar, to be not honest. Not even on the radar. Just to be honest with you, yeah. I'm picky about my peninsulas. What up, Iberian? What up, Florida? What up, Lower Peninsula, Michigan? I'm just saying. What up, Baja? I see you out there. <laughs> I can dig it. Yeah, so she betrayed Rome by letting the Sabines just... She just opened the doors for them to raid into the city. But she was going to get just paid handsomely for it, right? Yeah, she thought she was. She thought she was going to get paid in jewelry avarice oh hell yeah the bane of the human heart wait a second the whole city's gonna die now wait i'm a woman right yeah but you got the roman accent dot on wait the whole city will die but i will i will i will gain this bushel of what is it jewelry i know it's jewelry but what is the type uh you you'll see <laughs> i thought you i thought you already mentioned it a gay it or something I thought you said what it was. Never mind. I'm just really hopeful for this bushel of jewelry. For <laughs> Please don't, don't kill me for tre- treachery. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, dude, she fucked up. It's uh, she let them in all the way to the temple in the center of the city. The Sabines. The Sabines. Sabines. Yeah. And it, for her reward, they. We're like, all right, how about some fucking precious metal? And then they all threw all of their shields on top of her, crushing her to death. Bitch. <laughs> well, she fucked up, man. You don't fuck. Like, you just let the enemy into your city. Like, that's no good. That's a bad move. Not a good look, Tarpeia. I used to work with this guy as a young man. Name, name Tarpeia. <laughs> no. <laughs> I worked at like um, a car dealership body shop. Uh-huh. I was like the asshole that cleaned the place, swept, mm-hmm. swept it. But this one body man painter guy, we had mice there and they found like this baby mouse. Like that was like not scared. Like mm-hmm. would walk around, maybe ate poison. I don't know. But he took his foot and he fucking crushed it. He's like, oh, baby mouse. He's like. <laughs> and uh, I go, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> How'd you do that? You know? And he goes, uh I just wanted to see if he could support the weight of my foot. Isn't that fucking cold? <laughs> That's a fucking like psychopath <laughs> motherfucker right there. That's crazy. I'd be like, I would have quit. I would have been <sighs> like, please forget my face. Forget my, you don't know and, me. I like, didn't want to know something else. Like you never said like, God damn it in front of him. He's like heavy church guy, little pocket of Bible, course he was. pocket Bible in his painter's shirt pocket. With Makes a total name sense. Patch. God My bless. God, God bless. <laughs> Cru- oh, that that life though wasn't that too important, though. But yours is, and because you're human, right? Like, <laughs> don't worry about the other earthling, like such as the mouse trying to live. But, yeah, just cruelly, cruelly. Yeah, that's horrifying. So like I hear about humans dying. Uh, you know, in reality, like real life on the news, people dying all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like you're like desensitized to like mass death. Sorry for the bad news in Nevada, though. That mass shooting, that sucks. Yeah, that is Sorry if you're part really of that. Really fucking awful. But it's like you're so desensitized to human death. Like when you hear about 
somebody like stepping on a fucking mouse. You're like, <gasps> oh, how dare you? Like, get so bad. Or like, yeah, I killed this freaking, you know, praying mantis is on my arm. Like, you just be like, oh. But, but those things, praying mantises are really fucking sweet. sentient. Like, they're like as smart as your dog, kind of. <laughs> yeah, they're cool. But, anyways. Yeah, a lot of people die every day get, getting desensitized to it. Let's get back to the history of death. <laughs> of human, atrocious, human, atrocious, history's atrocious underbelly. Get it right. If you're going to be if you're going to be a co-host on the show, you got to get the tagline right. <laughs> so, how did Tarpeia die exactly? I thought she was crushed by a pile of shields. Yeah, but well, that would mean generally at the end of that she'd be suffocating right unless she suffocated for a duration to where she died yeah so it'd be like eventually oh, the weight suffocating? gets so heavy yeah. that the the person's lungs can't open Ex- up anymore expand yeah, and then they die from that yeah the other thing that can generally arise from getting this sort of treatment is deformation Like when you're the structural integrity of your body can no longer handle the weight that's being put on it. Yeah. Lots of broken bones, I imagine, get accrued from this process. Let me let me say this. I looked up like suffocation death, Mm -hmm. like when you're hanging yourself, like not by the broken neck part, but just by the death of no oxygen part. Yeah. Like it's like peaceful. They're saying like you just like black out like you go to sleep like a sleeper hold in wrestling you just go to sleep and then you die i but it's not like you're tell, like i don't think that's accurate yeah. like um have you ever been have you ever been like drowning yeah once i imagine it feels like you're drowning and that's fucking no fun well yeah you get past that struggle yes but it's because that's a, that's the most scared I've ever been in my life right. of anything. I thought I could swim under a pool cover. Me too. And I couldn't. We've cu- we've talked about this on the show. Oh right? yeah, but like yeah, same here. Yeah, I had, like super strength and I lifted it up. Like I adrenaline. had I had to just like calm down and make it the rest of the way. I couldn't get yeah because I like I did the same thing. I couldn't get it to suction solar. off the wall. Yeah, solar. Yeah, me too. Fuck. Yeah, I was swimming under God in a damn. part where it was too deep for me to touch, so I couldn't like force it up. I just had to tough it out and keep swimming. It Hold was your breath. Yeah, yeah. Scariest thing ever me happened. Too. Was your adrenaline like life flashing for your eyes? Like yeah, especially especially because also the thought intertwined with it is I don't want to get in trouble because when i was putting the cover on the pool my mother forbid me to do this exact thing that i'm gonna die doing right now oh <laughs> she was like when you pull the cover across then just we'll go around the side and lift it up i didn't do that i said no Fuck i'll that. make it do my own thing yeah and like it was fucking dark out everybody else was inside probably was air bad. conditioning Ooh. on yeah there was no rescue coming i would have been toast um foolishness foolishness on my part but okay but I'm saying that was so me. scary, suffocating, I don't think's a good way to go. It's not gonna make it's not gonna up the last episode with Chickatillo. That's way better than suffocating. Have you have you ever been blacked out where you like lean over, breathe really heavy, and then your friend picks you up and you're like mm, and you black out for a minute and you're like out of your mind? Yeah, or like getting choked out. Kinda like that, and you're like the cut off like that air to your brain or whatever mm-hmm. for a minute. Like that kind of blackout and then after that blackout then you suffocate while you're in that blackout so you that's what i'm saying yeah like, that'd be all right because that's like three seconds and you're, you're just boom there's no time to be even be afraid so one more thing about this is so you have that so maybe it is peaceful maybe getting crushed might be more pleasant than any other the things that we've mentioned ah there's a key difference though but i want to let me finish you're at the same time as you just said the bones are going to be snapping mm-hmm. so it's not going to be a pain-free blackout it's going to be a bone snapping fucking going go into shock fucking now i can die and there's two different types of chokes like two different types of way that you can like be put like put out there's the blood choke like which is where like it's fast like you cut off the carotid artery or whatever and, like two seconds later you're sleeping mm-hmm 
Um, I do that to myself at night. The other kind is not fast. That's an air choke. That's one where you can't get air into you. Like that's basically like also strangling, drowning. drowning kind. Of, oh, that's filling up with water. Yeah, drowning or strangling. Yeah. Like that takes minutes. That's not. That's not quick. That's horrible. <laughs> Or that, so it's that it's the bad one combined with breaking bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what happened to Tarpeia. <laughs> We're just moving right along with Tarpeia, <laughs> getting so sidetracked. But it's good. And then afterwards, they threw her off of an adjacent cliff. Yeah, which is called the the Cliff of Tarpeia. Right. It, to this day, they still yeah. call it that. You can go yeah. visit it. Yeah. You can go throw a body off of it if you had a body to throw. Mm-hmm. There's, it's pro- Rome's a, a big city now, though. they probably, you're going to get caught. You know what I Just heard? Saying. Dinner in Hell fun fact about uh-huh. this cliff. It's like a place where a lot of teenagers like to go, like backpackers and shit. And they're getting a crazy amount of kids first crushing one of their friends to death. And flinging them off the cliff, they're like, "You guys gotta stop this!" Uh, yeah, but your they friends sh- are dying. They gotta stop leaving hundreds and hundreds of shields just laying around. No, on they top crush of this them, cliff. They crush them with whatever garbage cans and shit. They jump on them. They're right. jumping on them and shit. And um, they fucking throw them off a cliff. And it's like, guys, these are lives. The Instagram hearts are not worth this. So I was thinking they threw her off this cliff. You know, the Romans, mm-hmm. because they were too lazy to dig a fucking grave, you fucking lazy piece of shit. You got the fucking energy to throw your shield on her, but you don't have to take time to dig a hole and bury her, huh? You're mm-hmm. going to th- throw off the cliff and forget about her, huh? How many other those? How many other, other bodies are at the bottom of this cliff? All right, kids these days have no work ethic. Son of a gun. Back then, I was like, I ain't digging no hole. She was a bitch. She was going to get a whole city killed, man. I ain't digging. I ain't digging either. Yeah, I'm no. with Morty. <laughs> Roman soldier named Morty. I'm with Rick. I ain't digging either. I'm with Rick. They kneel. Fuck that. We're taking a knee. Throw off the cliff where, we're, where no one's digging a grave for this asshole. Yeah, no, we're sick of it. Now, I heard there was regions like... All over the world, not just Rome, but like Great Britain. I heard there was like even South America, like the Aztecs. Yes. In pre-Columbian America, there is evidence, very little, of especially in the Aztec culture. This is what I was most looking forward to. Crushing to death. This is what I was most looking forward to is this part, was the Aztec details. Well, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to disappoint you because there's just a few artistic depictions of it being done more or less their shields were wood <laughs> uh, no. well they just did it with rocks yeah they just did it with with piling heavy stones on top of people um presumably in the service of giving a sacrifice okay so theirs wasn't necessarily for punishment they were doing it to sustain their gods i was gonna suggest but, to you yeah an aztec episode i doing the research for this did you discover this looking up aztec where that someone was just describing all the sacrifices that aztecs were doing and who they're doing it to yeah it's they, all no, children yeah there's lots did of you kids. catch that link or that? oh yeah because oh they're God. uh they're the most pure like they give the most energy right, to the, the gods pure team. like what's i mean I, man, it was brutal. Like, this one hasn't even been on his first hunt yet. He's nine. Perfect. Oh, that's you don't get purer than that, man. He's going to feed our God so good. He's, he just got done breastfeeding, this guy. Pure as shit. Purest kid here. And there's, like, parents that, like, love their kid more. They're like, no, my kid is dirty. He's fucking, he's up to no good all the time. He kills shit. He's dirty. Go, go piss on that. Sacrificing <laughs> my kid would be bad. We'd have a drought. Yeah, totally. The crops wouldn't be shit. He's a little asshole. That's how you got to play it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be the safe way. Parents tell their kid to go do something bad. Go kill that guy's chicken for no reason. Just run. 
yeah, my kid kills chickens randomly. Look, not, pure, not very pure. It's like, yeah, when they're going around looking for the kids to like pick, like your like eight year old has like a barbed wire tattoo on right. their bicep, like Oakley's backwards baseball hat. Oakley's <laughs> He's driving a Jeep. No, with no top. Fuck that. He's got an eye rock. <laughs> T-top. Yeah. <laughs> got a fucking car phone one of those really thin chin beards <laughs> like razored you know what i'm talking about yeah oh yeah oh yeah platinum chain for real wife beater yeah the only kind of jewelry that He's i eight. wear this is the eight-year-old aztec boy yeah that's how you make him look not pure <laughs> right yeah he'll never be sacrificed and that he'll get up I mean, the only jewelry you'll catch me in is one of my, like, giant gold rope chains, like, run DMC or some shit. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it. Keep it in that thing on your wall, that, like, case. I've seen it with a light on it. I never take it off. I sleep in it. <laughs> yeah. I see the green ring around the back part. It's <laughs> gross. <laughs> Smells, too. So, bummer. No real Aztec details except for, you know, primitive shit. Yeah, there's not, not like, much to go on. It's not like they were smelting metals smelting them mm -hmm. and forming shields out of them you know they were still like let's make a shield out of dinosaur bone tapir bone i don't know <laughs> south american flora and fauna yeah well the chief proponent of the usage of this is of course the empire of great britain why wouldn't it be yeah, pressing as a torture or execution method in reality was perhaps... It came out of their system of common law. Now, Henry II of England introduced sort of secular tribunals to the country around like the 1150s. And common law sort of grew out of that. And because it was not religious, you know, separate from the religious you know, the way they used to decide this shit. And it applied to all people in the empire in common, at least theoretically. I mean, you're not getting aristocrats in these courts. But they developed, a, you know, kind of high-minded ideas about what courts were supposed to be like. You know, like, by all the good shit that, like, we see on TV and, like, court shows where they're like, no, we need to be fair. And, like, this stuff that's not actually in reality. All that good shit, that sort of came from this common law system. When you brought up the 1150s, the year, mm -hmm. God, man, all I was trying, I was trying to think of like, man, who was freaking Shogun in 1150? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, it can't be because like Shoguns didn't even come around until like 1165, 1185, right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. 1185, I think it was. But um, yeah, we covered that in Samurai Code episode. That's yeah, that's badass. a pretty good one. Sam yeah. You, there's uh there's a lot of stuff in there you might not expect from samurais the way they rated swords by how many bodies they could cut through at one swipe interesting teacher pupil relationships check out samurai code it's good good listen yeah so 1150s these courts sort of come into being they develop these ideas and they, they didn't like to take custody of someone who is charged with a crime or take jurisdiction over them until they consented to the jurisdiction of the court. Guilty or not guilty? Yes. Yeah, that's how they would judge it. It's, it's, okay, so you're buying into this system if you enter a plea, either guilty or not guilty. But you could remain quiet. Yeah, some people saw the and, loophole in that shit. And delay your fate. Yeah, because if you if you don't want to be charged with a crime, you can just keep your mouth shut. Now, well, they sort of realized that just nobody would ever say anything and that these courts would be completely useless eventually if they didn't come up with something to do about it. So they did, and it was... Pressing. Pressing, exactly. The French freaking French law had their own language and everything, and they had their own name for this sentence, mm -hmm. right? Which was forceful and hard punishment, or how else in French? Pene forte et dure. Pene forte <laughs> et dure. Yeah, I think that's basically what it is. Yeah. Pene forte et dure. 
I see. I don't even know uh, how to pronounce it because this law French is fucking weird. It's like a weird amalgamation of a bunch of different languages. It's not French. Yeah, it's, it's not mostly regular. Latin. So I don't know how to say that, but that's what they called it. Well, forceful and hard punishment. We'll just call it pressing, I think. I'm calling it crushing, like our band. <laughs> now, e- even after the the pressing or crushing method was used to try and force them to make a plea, there was still a really, really good reason to not plea and endure this fa- fate, to choose death by crushing if you thought you were going to be convicted of a crime because the de- sentence to the death of the crime you're convicted of is worse or you'll be in jail for a long time no if you are convicted of a crime so say you you murdered somebody and the, like you have a pretty good idea that you're not getting off like they're gonna kill you for it but how are they gonna kill you hang you probably hanging or cut your head off yeah guillotine this is British. Would it, We're talking British culture. Yes. Here. Yeah. So yeah. So it, what? Well, Gun, not the, gunshot. The bad thing is, is if you're convicted of a crime, the state, the king, confiscates your entire estate. So you lose your house, all, anything you have saved oh, up, any now, property you've got, it's all gone. Now I remember. Yeah. If you get crushed to death because you refuse to plea, technically you haven't been convicted of a crime so then your children will get to inherit your estate still right yeah that's good so you're gonna suffer for the good of your family yeah yep you still have that option if you want to let your estate live on you know so like your wife and kids or whatever can keep living in the house they've lived in forever you can choose to be crushed to death rather than go to trial and maybe get off or maybe get hung or something so sacrifice yourself for the good of your loved ones. Yes, that you that is a choice Man. that can be made to endure that crushing to death. So many freaking biblical undertones in our show, it's not even funny. Is, there, is everybody picking up on them? Because that was a big one right there. We're trying to push our beliefs on you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're secretly a heavy Christian show, and we're trying to reverse teach everyone to be nice by this is how bad it was I yeah know. i mean i guess it's time we just come out with it we have a heavily rastafarian agenda i'm a pastor at my church at my parish i'm a dudas pastor yes yeah as as you as a dinner and hell listeners do do well know yep i'm also an ordained minister have you married anyone no i have <laughs> Uh, well, uh, well, I guess you win, Rob. Well, you got to tell people so they know. And then, I did last time, and nobody said anything. Uh, and I made a Facebook post about look, it. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't do it just on May- MySpace alone. You got to do it on Facebook as well. Yeah, I guess somehow they don't think my ideas would be appropriate for their ceremony. No one reads your live journal, Brad. Nobody's also willing to get to my budget. Right. $4,000 a service. You write it. You do all the work. I just show up and say it. Four thou and a room that night locally. Yeah, and a unlimited driver. room service allowance and a driver. And you're not getting your security deposit back. That's for sure. One hour max work. <laughs> all right. So, so <laughs> yeah. So you decide you want to pass all your shit on to your kids and you're like, all right, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and I'm going to get crushed to death. So the the common law process itself would generally involve the victim being placed nude on their backs on a hard service. Think like the stone floor of a, a dark room. I think he said service. Sounded like service. I'm sorry. On a hard service. The common law process would generally involve the victim being placed nude on their backs on a hard surface. Nice! Think like the stone floor of a darkened chamber. Or like a wooden block that you, like a giant wooden butcher's block. Yeah, it's like something like that too, yeah. Yeah, elevated from the floor. Solid oak. Like some kind of like bitchin' stone altar. Never cleaned. Oh, dinner in hell, dinner in hell, consistent 
Dinner and Hill details. They don't clean this shit. Hair, sweat, eye juice, shit, eyeball juice, bile. So okay, they Flem. they lay you down nude on your on your back. They put this um, wooden board above on top of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they just stack shit on it. The until weight, you're dead. Pretty yeah. Much. Now you said. Um, uh, you didn't say this before, but what your head is exposed for everyone to see. Yeah, and and, th- and they said sometimes they would cover the, they would lay a cloth over the person for decency, and I was like, oh, so they're gonna cover their privates? And I was like, no, the privates are covered by the wooden board. Mm-hmm. It's the decency part is their freaking eyes pop out of their head. Yeah, and their tongues. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> so awful. Like, you know, leave their head exposed. But put a freaking. I can imagine scenarios in which shit like explodes out the sinuses and all kinds of the you ears. Know. Yeah, all kinds of bad stuff happening. Bone snapping. I mean, you, you've seen what happened to the dude when he got run over by the steamroller and who framed Roger Rabbit. I assume that's a depiction of real life. Right, because all his organs were misshapen because of the weight of the steamroller. Yeah, he became two dimensional. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. It's a sad thing. Now, like we said earlier, this process can last a long ass time. Now, the way this was dictated to happen under common law is that on the first day, the victim would be fed three morsels of the shittiest, moldiest bread they had laying around, and that's it. And then after that, every day, they were only to be offered three drinks of stagnant, like, standing water. Awesome. God damn. Real, like, real, like, here's your pond scum, asshole. Yeah, this was in a puddle out back yeah. by the trough. This is out of the trough. Antifreeze in it. <laughs> this is parked out back. This is from the horse trough. Diesel. It's, what? What are you saying? I'll say if you have, I have, for whatever reason I thought of a puddle out back, I thought of a parking like, lot. Like a like rainbow the, slick in it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you fucking diesel fuel in there or Some fucking mosquito larva. Hell yeah. Yeah, so if, the, if you were one of the unlucky ones who had it last for days, that's what you can look forward to. Mm. Drinking that. So why would I bother drinking and eating? They have a master pricker, like, poking the eye, like episode one. Well, yeah. Open they, up. <laughs> yeah, Here see. it comes with the needle. Okay. One, of, one of the specific examples we'll get to today, you'll see something like that. What if you have to go to the bathroom and you're getting pressed? What if you're like, excuse me, excuse me, sir, I have to use the restroom. They got to pull all that weight off you, pull the board off you. Like, oh, fuck, that's a lot of weight. Okay, you got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> go crap. Uh, Come I, back. I, all I right, mean, put it back. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I imagine we're in a milk and honey uh type scenario from Weird. our episode one where you will just shit all over yourself you, you'll poop your pants no pants oh you're, you're nude you'll poop the board yeah you're gonna poop and pee the board yep and blood the board eventually yeah and eventually eyeball juice the board yeah yeah cerebral life. spinal fluid the board that's human history everyone that's we didn't make this up that's real documented facts mm-hmm we found yeah. So, well, sometimes they would run out of weight. The law would be like, all right, this this says you put a maximum of 400 or Go 700 sewer, pounds or whatever. Go grab the sewer caps out of the, of the manhole covers yeah. out of the street. Bring those in here. Everyone knows that, Brad. Roman times. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, all the uh, subterranean sewers. Yeah. They, well, they, I mean, this is what happened in the cases of both major strangways which is a really fucking weird name. <laughs> what? <laughs> this dude's name, who was crushed to death once, was Major Strangways. I double-checked it like 35 times. That is actually his name. Also, John Weeks. That's a normal name. John Weeks, normal name. Major Strangways? Yes. Weird name. Uh, both of them, same fate. See, but the problem is, is when they were being crushed, they ran out of weight. So the bystanders, in order to be merciful to these two men, all climbed on top to finish them off. Yeah, everybody pile on. Grab your kid 
Everyone's like holding. They got their kid with them. They're like holding their kid. Like, go play gonna, King of the Hill. We're gonna go kill this guy as a family. They're reading their stone tablets. Yeah, like, you don't want to plead guilty, huh? Give me the Coliseum section. Kids, go play King of the Hill. Son of a gun. Wasn't there some woman that was like hiding priests? Yes, an, uh, a very famous case of pressing to death is the martyrdom of Catholic saint Margaret Clitheroe. This is still in the UK, right? We're still in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sh- I made a joke about Romans people for major strangways, but that was definitely in the modern day. Well, whatever. Yeah. I think it was, it was fine. Whatever. Amateur. Yeah, so Margaret, she was hiding Catholic priests within her house. Doesn't sound so bad. God damn it. Yeah, except that good old Henry VIII, who I'm sure we'll get back to at some point. Hell of a venue. Hell of a building. Hell of a Petri dish, I'd imagine. Google Henry VIII, Southgate, Michigan. <laughs> and zoom in on Google Maps and just be and just love it and just take it all in <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, its namesake issued the Act of Supremacy in 1534 that split England from the Catholic Church because he wanted to get divorced and he resented that there were people who were preventing him from doing whatever the hell he wanted. So he was like, no, we got a new church. Catholics, you're out of here. So b- being a Catholic, let alone being a Catholic priest, was considered treasonous at this point in English history. Dude, let me tell you right now, if we're talking 1534, Shogun Oda, Noba. Nobunaga would not freaking the guy that was from the Owari domain originally would not let that shit fly. Uh, Nobunaga son, I don't yeah, think so. That's one shogun that if he, I'm if he caught wind of it, I'm sure he'd be upset. Yeah, so sh- hiding priests all of a sudden in that context, treason is when bad shit usually happens to you. Now she refused to plead to the crime. Because if she had to go to trial, then that would mean that her children would also have to testify. Now, that could also implicate them in the crimes is the problem. They won't get the estate. They, well, they wouldn't get the estate, and they might also get executed for it. Mm. Because if they're hiding Catholic priests, too, like if they know about it, yeah, how, they're doing it, too. They're tr- committing treason, too. They get killed. How pure souls are we talking? Uh, maybe not pure enough for the Aztecs. They're valued over, over the pond, across the pond over there in Brasilia. Brasilia. The Aztecs would probably pay a lot of Aztec gold for those kids, depending on the purity. Oh, yeah, probably. If you can get, I mean, like, I mean, you could feed a god. Got, off of like one of those little Charles Dickens kids. You could feed a god for a good two weeks on one yeah. of them. We're talking a beautiful harvest at the end of the farming oh, season. Oh, just blooming. Yeah, especially blooming. their blonde hair, blue eye, like an English kid. Hell yeah. Tons of Aztec gold. <laughs> we are not pro-child sacrifice, by the way. We're just trying to ah. make fun of things humans did to each other. <laughs> That's trying to keep it light yeah. so we don't be sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so on March 25th, 1586, she was stripped naked. Woo! Placed, and this is an interesting wrinkle for Ow! her case. <laughs> is, uh, she was placed on her back on top of a sharp rock about the size of a fist. That's such bullshit. <laughs> well, maybe it was better off in the end. We'll see. Listen, we'll people, see. you know what's coming. She's laying on her back on a flat surface, hard surface. No, almost naked. flat surface. <laughs> Listen, naked. On, just picture the flat. Now picture Brad's fist-sized rock, like a golf ball even, under your back. And you got to lay on that. And then the weight piles on. Yeah. So our, immediately, it's already incredibly painful. I don't care where <laughs> they put it. With God no it. weight on you. Like on your spine or like to the left or right of it would suck. Yeah. Either way, it all sucks. Yeah. Now, she had her face covered with a handkerchief. And after that, like you said earlier, on comes the door. Boom. Right on top of her. So, I mean, imagine this door on you with that fucking rock already. Just a heavy-ass old door. 
Yeah. They stacked stones on top of her, totaling an additional 700 pounds. Whoa. That rock just digging in. Man, yeah. fuck that. Now, the reason the rock may have been a blessing in disguise is because, luckily for her, she was dead within 15 minutes. It was solid lead. <laughs> the rock was made of lead covered in cyanide perfect um imagine like when like we discussed getting up for bathroom breaks when they're Mm -hmm. getting crushed yeah imagine like she's getting like all right time for her to go to bathroom so like they let her up and she gets up and the rock is like stuck in her back you know have you ever sat like yeah and then like nobody wants to tell her yeah have you ever had like a penny stuck to your leg you're like god damn it i didn't know how to fucking find it like how sweaty am i yeah how gross am i (laughs) shit do i need a shower find a penny you wake up you're in the streets of detroit like what happened last night you got penny stuck to your leg you ever been there you ever woke up oh i've covered uh, in mildew in the streets of detroit i've like fallen asleep with um at the wheel like a huge pot uh, <laughs> with like a huge pocket fulls of change for some reason and then woke up like two hours later with them, like all stuck all over my belly and shit you woke up later in mexico barefoot no money like what the fuck happened last night what happened you partied hard in michigan here i am in mexico barefoot i may or i may or may not have slept on my own lawn once but that's as bad as it ever got i slept in a park as a kid we both told our parents we were staying at each other's house we just ran the streets all night (laughs) slept in the park like like i said woke up covered in mildew that's real (laughs) shit that's a what that sounds like a fun night that's runaways know what i'm talking about right runaways like boxcar kids (laughs) yeah boxcar crew eventually you get face tattoos some you know black tight leather pants and you get a dog and you just sit around downtown play the guitar play get, some, in, like, Nirvana get, into, songs. get into crust punk and hit the road live off dumpster trash food <laughs> um okay so america is not innocent Nope, this is an execution method that has occurred on American soil in an official capacity. I mean, as you can imagine, earlier we said this is famous, famously done by the Great British Empire, which included its colonies, namely America. Now, Ron, what do you say we go back in time? Okay. Where are we? 1692. Oh, that's what I thought by by looking at that font on that sign on that business or that saloon. I could tell that by the era. Salem, Massachusetts. There wouldn't be a saloon. These are Puritans. No I would, alcohol. I, I, did I say saloon? I meant it said welcome to Salem. Now that I my eyesight's not so good. I, there was too many crows flying in front of the sign. <laughs> when I went to look at it, I couldn't make it out. Yeah, a September morning. A man, the fog's rolling in. God, there's not a leaf on any trees here in Salem. This is spooky. The wind is howling through the forest. Goddamn crows won't quit. Stop with the crows. It's un- unsettling, isn't it? So let's go witch hunting, Brad. <laughs> any lo- what, let's ask the locals, hey, you know anybody around here that might be into witchcraft? Well, imagine the the grim salesman or shopkeeper, whoever the fuck's talking to you, is like, yeah, I know a dreadful wizard. Go on. His name's Giles Corey. Giles Corey. Is that his real name? That sounds made up for, like, the stage. No, that's his name, Giles Corey. You sure it's not Giles? No, I'm not he was, positive. He was born Giles, but he's like, call me Giles. It's almost like Niles, I'm a Brig Fraser fan. It's like the Jay Giles band. Freeze frame! Freeze frame! Wait. Still heard a, I just heard a crow. God damn it. We're still in Salem. Oh. We're still in Salem. So let's let's talk about Jay Giles. Corey. Jay Giles, Corey, lives up there at the Corey place. He's a wizard. Yeah. Fucking charged with being a wizard. The only man 
to have been done so during the course of this literal witch hunt, the one for which those are now named. The, the only man killed for witchcraft? Yep. In America, anyway. And as you know, there's no such thing as witches. Well, there is, but not this. So, first guy this is in, yeah, this is an, an English colony, so common law applies. And he's charged with a crime. Being a wizard is a crime. And he refuses to plea. Now, I don't know how big his estate was. I, I don't know if that was motivating it. For him, it just seemed like he was pissed. And he was like, I hate the, this bullshit, and I'm not going along with it. Is the, was that the impression you kind of got from it, too? I felt he was cocky in the end. Yeah, he sure as hell was. I didn't dig too deep into it, but his last words, if you want to do it. Yeah, he was, you know, after he refused to plea and they fucking put him in the position and shit and they're stacking a bunch of weight on him, he was asked three times if he would plead now. Like, they're like, ha ha, here's all the weight. You ready to plead now, asshole? What? And he's like, no, because what the only thing he would respond to when he was asked that question is he would just say more weight. It's badass. Like, that's like, I like, I like that. Even when you're doomed, still being like, fuck you. Like, uh, what's her name? When she was getting broken on the wheel and they left her alive overnight and yeah. she was like, nah, fuck you. And then she hung herself by like, even though she was all broken already. Catherine? No, Catherine's one that touched her. Yeah, she, she got beheaded immediately. I can't remember the other one. Yeah. No, well... Well, I'm gonna go back and listen to it. You go back and listen to the yeah. wheel one too. It's a good one. They had to like prop her up because her bones were all broke from the wheel. <laughs> she couldn't mm-hmm. s- support her own body. <laughs> yeah, awful. Now, oh yeah, you brought up earlier like the master pricker. Yeah. Again, well, there is a similar scenario because the sheriff who was you know doing this execution, every time he would ask him this question, he would climb up on top of the rocks that were stacked up on top of you know Giles Giles, and he would take his cane too, and from the weight bulging his tongue out, the sheriff would occasionally take his cane and jam his tongue back into his mouth. Such an awful visual. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine just choking at that point on your yeah, own. Yeah, I don't even know. But he like <laughs> kept staying alive, and he stayed completely defiant till the end. Because every single time they asked him, like, "Are you ready to enter a plea now?" He'd just say, "More weight." Just like throwing up middle fingers at everybody on the way out. I love it. There's also a Dinner in Hell popular character. There's a method that would use someone from our past shows. Oh, yes. And the crushing topic may call to mind one of our older episodes. Not too old. Pretty recent. No rocks needed. Elephant executions. (laughs) Yeah. Elephants can be used to crush people, too. They just freaking step on your face. Yep, so this is flat. This is definitely a similar type of experience. You know, it's not getting your head popped like a cherry, but they don't step on your whole body, they just step on your head. Yeah, it's like the opposite, actually. Yeah. It's like the like yin and yang. Yeah. And then they just give like the elephant like a peanut and like, good boy. Yeah, single yeah. peanut. One single peanut. Good boy. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's amazing. People love our elephant episodes. If you look at like plays, total plays, mm-hmm. Battle of Kenai, who recently passed 100. Congratulations, Battle of Kenai. Nice work. That was episode three. And then um, our elephant execution episode, people um, seem to like that one. Yeah, that one's kind of a hit. People like our elephants involved. Hey, we got to find some more fucked up elephant shit. Well, I mean, we could probably do the way they're treated in like the tourism industry in Thailand now, but I don't know if that'll be funny. Just depressing. Right, yeah. Or um, we can make dinner in hell, stuffed animal. Elephants? Elephant, yeah. <laughs> With like knives taped to its trunk. 
Mm, metal, just like blood spray. M- metal weaponry attached to it. With like a, a flattened head stuck under its foot. Like it's got head stuck. <laughs> like it stepped in dog shit, but it's human head. Yeah, you Talking put, like, stuffed animals here. Yeah, it comes with like a toy peanut. If you put it close, it just starts stamping a foot. Yeah, it'll stop anything. <laughs> Yeah, you put your act GI Joes it's under a, there. It's a nutcracker. It cracks a nut. Yeah, and yeah, you get the go. nut and sweet. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's a great op- idea. Dinner Almost help. in time for the holidays. Dinner and help peanut opener. Well, uh, yeah. In terms of the 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 type of crushing we've been talking about today, in under common law, it was abolished in 1772. So not too long after Giles got his, they put an end to it. They just decided, you know, if somebody refuses to enter a plea, we'll just call that guilty. Seems like that would have been a pretty easy solution to come up with, I don't know, five, six hundred years sooner. (laughs) Right? I mean, isn't that just like... And you get to confiscate all the shit then. So it even solves the loophole for them. How yeah. the fuck did that come up with this sooner? <laughs> this is a pretty awful execution, but nowhere nearly as awful as some of our other past ones. Like the Ling Chi one's probably one of our grossest, awfulest. Yeah, that's. but this episode, I think it's probably a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit funnier than that one. Yeah. Because that one's just like... Sorrow. It's like dirty, kind of. <laughs> So so bad. I don't know. There's like a butcher. There's a guy that works as a butcher, like a like a meat market. He's like, I don't have a problem with it. It's yeah, pretty good. Oh, it was great, man. Or, or your uh, your former coworker at the auto body shop might not have any problem with it either. Guy works at the. We have a listener that works at like a Turkish slaughterhouse. He's like, I love that. I love that. That's one of the best episodes. <laughs> She's talking about. I'm Turkish. I'm just kidding. That's my Turkish That's accent. Pretty good Turkish accent. Can you name a Turkish basketball player ever in the NBA? We had one on the Pistons. He was not black. He was tall. Was it Darko? Nope. Was he from Croatia or something? Something like that. Serbia? Yeah. This guy was on the Pistons. There I can't a- think of the guy on the Pistons. I know I have one, like, I can see in his face. He was um, in, like... It's like first Tarka glue or something. Hiru Turkalu is Turkish. Yeah, that's who I'm thinking. But of. it's not him. We had Mehmet Okur. Mehmet Oh yeah, yep. Yep. There you go. Hello, Turkey. Well, do you want to remind us of any Turkish basketball players that I can't think of right now? Yeah. If so, contact us. Dinner and Hell Pod on Twitter. That's the best way. If we're on Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, you can hit up us uh, on email. Dinner and Hell Podcast at gmail.com. We're over at Dinner and Hell.com. We're on Stitcher. We're on stuff we didn't even know we could put us on, like yeah. Stage Fright, we some had, kind of thing. Yeah, we had no say in that matter. They just took it. But We're everywhere. Just you, come and find us. We are now the fifth result of Dinner and Hell on Google on the front page of Google results. <laughs> we're past, like, somebody, whatever they were doing. Some kind of do a show about couples. Some weird. My dinner in hell. Like, yeah. Like a bad date. Gone yeah. Bad. But we're we're close we're, to the top. We're not yeah, hard to find. We're fifth now. It's good. Click this. Scroll show. down. Our freaking audience. They appreciate this band. Oh yeah, they're incredible. Just the best. It's an incredible show. Ladies and gentlemen, listeners. Good night. Good night. <laughs>